Hey friends, it's Sharon with part two of my story. You know, I just want to give a shout out to all those who watched last week's video. We had a tremendous response and I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to my story. I pray it blessed you and that the Lord has been using it to get you on a path of discovery of who he has created you to be. It's about being authentically you in 2022 and beyond. When we've been in great times of change and God is doing tremendous things in all of our lives and in the world. And he has been rearranging us and restructuring us as systems, as nations, as individuals, so that we can reflect who he has created us to be. You know, there's no one like you. You are unique and your calling and your destiny has been laid out since the foundation of the world. Your very DNA is inscribed with what God has destined for you. There's a book written about your life in heaven. And I don't know about you, but I want to be like David that said, everything that was written about me, I accomplished. I want to accomplish all that God has put in my book. So I encourage you, if you weren't able to watch last week's video, you may do so by going to solidrocklc.org or subscribing to our channels, which are YouTube and Telegram. You may see the links below after this video. Friends, God is so good. He so wants each one of us to get positioned this year to be fully activated into his kingdom cause. Do you know that it's his people that he uses to bring change to the earth? That's you and me. And he has great things that he wants to do uh, with us individually, but also corporately as a body. He wants to impact the nation of America and whatever nation that you are from with his spirit, his glory, his power, his peace, his love, we are the agents of change in the earth. So it's important that we take the time to get our lives in line with his purpose. That brings me to what I want to talk about today, which is God uses circumstances and prophetic words, dreams, visions, the word of God. He uses others to speak to us and help us make changes in our life to fully express him. You know, last week I shared about an experience that my husband and I had uh, in 2020 when my father-in-law was in hospice. We were back in California for three months while he was uh, being prepared for heaven. And the Lord used that experience to really touch our hearts and for me personally to shift me and to begin to show me that even though I've been in ministry for 40 years and I've done everything uh, according to the blueprint of heaven as far as I understood it, listening to the Holy Spirit, uh, being authentic, being real, uh, teaching biblical truths. I've done all of that to the best of my ability. And I thought that I was walking out all that God had created for me. But during this experience, these three months with Leonard and in the, in, in the years since then, the Holy Spirit has been showing me that, man, I have fallen short of what I was created to be. So that's what I want to share with you, a little bit about the journey. I think I shared last week that in 2019, God began to shift my husband and I uh, and begin to tell us that there was a, tra a big transition coming in our life. Well, we thought it was one thing, but God had another whole uh, thought in mind. And so at the end of 2019, my husband and I packed up everything that we owned in 13 bins and put them in the back of our F-250, and we headed from California to Indiana, my birthplace, 
the crossroads of America. And the Spirit of the Lord said to us before we moved, He said, I'm taking you there because I have a land, a mission, and a people for you. So we were excited about that, even though we were going to have to leave our family, our friends, the ministry that we had taken 24 years to build up in California. We were going on an adventure. Well, little did, little did we know that when we arrived in Indiana, our lives were going to be greatly impacted by events, circumstances that came into our life. So we arrived in the, in the January of 2020. Immediately, I started a First Fruits National Call because that was the one thing Holy Spirit said I was to do, start a First Fruits National Call. So a week after we arrived, I started that call. Well, then February of that year, 2020, we were blessed to be able to go to Washington, D.C. with a delegate of about 77 people uh, that we had been a part of an intercessory, uh, governmental intercessory team. We went there to do some intercession and to kind of just wrap up what God had called us to do the previous year. It was a glorious trip. Well, as no sooner did we arrive home, did uh, uh, an event happened that began to shift our focus. And that event was the death of our uh, nephew and niece's father. And it was a sudden death. And it was a hard death. And the Lord showed us then that part of the reason why he brought us to California was to bless and minister life to our loved ones. Shortly after that, a month later, I had emergency gallbladder surgery. So what looked like a, a launching in January that our life and our ministry was launching into another dimension, by the time March arrived, I realized that I was on a respite for a season. Well, little did I know that I would be so impacted with death over the last next two years. 21 to be exact, 21 family members, friends, acquaintances have passed on. Each one of those hit me very hard, but none greater than my father-in-law's death at the end of 2020. And as I shared last week, being there for those three months during his preparation, I'd like to call it for heaven, was, it was glorious. It was very hard, but it was so sweet, filled with the Spirit. And one of the things that Leonard said that has so impacted my life, and really the very statements have what's been shifting me to see what God has intended for my life all along. He said to me one day, Sharon, I want to know that my life matters. I want to know that I please God, that I did everything that he asked me to do, that I loved people. And man, those words have been reverberating in my heart for the last year and month. So much so that the Holy Spirit began to use those words to get me to change focus. Those of you who know me, I've been very involved in ministry for 40 years. Uh, planted several churches, ministry centers, houses of prayer, schools of ministry. My husband and I have been privileged to be a part of some incredible ministries and we've you know, God birthed, we birthed a ministry called Solid Rock Ministries. We have a, a, a network called Cluster Kingdom Alliance. Um, and it just, God's just blessed us tremendously. Uh, but, and God began to show me uh, a year ago, over this last year, that I barely touched the surface of what he has destined for me. Remember I said in the beginning that God uses circumstances and he uses prophetic words and to, to 
direct us. And those, those prophetic words, dreams and visions, they are like a snapshot of what is possible. And uh, in 1981, two years after my husband and I were married, we longed to be in ministry. And the only way we knew to be in ministry was to go to Bible school and, you know, get a certificate and get licensed and, you know, come and, and be a part of a, you know, a church. So the Lord, uh, as we began to pray and seek the Lord about that, because we wanted to be used mightily uh, by the Lord to touch people's lives. And so he directed us to go to Cleveland, Tennessee, to a Bible school there. So my husband and I sold everything that we had and packed up the few things that we had remaining in our small car and we traveled from California to Tennessee, our, our first adventure, cross country adventure. When we arrived, um, things happened, I won't go into that, but we were tremendously blessed there. We knew God had brought us there. But um, the way the school was laid out was they brought in one speaker a week, one or two weeks, a speaker would come and would share a message. And then that Friday night and sometimes Saturdays, they would hold like a, a, an open meeting. And so this one, uh, one week in the, of the year, they bring in a prophet. And it was during this week when I had a divine encounter. And the, the, the encounter that I had lasted for about two weeks. I was literally in like a Holy Spirit bubble. That's the only way I know how to describe it. And everywhere I went, I was very near to the throne of God, to the heart of God, and to the Holy Spirit ministering to me. Every day, I would get on my knees by my bed, and I would pray. And one of the things that I longed for was to operate in all the gifts of the Spirit. I believed from the time I was born again that if I had all of Jesus and all of the Spirit, then why can't I operate in all of the gifts? So I prayed and prayed and prayed about that. We're doing this two-week period. I had a divine encounter. Jesus himself came into my room and took me on a, on a journey of ministry around the world. I was ministering his word. I was laying hands on the sick. The dead were raising. At one point, we were in a, a, a mass of people. I believe it must have been in the continent of Africa. And the people were just squeezed up against us. We could barely move. Like it talks about in the, G, in the Bible where it says Jesus was thronged. That's what it was like. But from that place, we couldn't really touch people. But our, my very shadow, the anointing that I had within me was healing people. Well, after that visitation, I cried out all the more to be equipped with the Spirit so that I could fulfill the vision. So when I found out that this prophet was coming to speak, I was so excited because I'm like, I'm going to get a prophetic word. God's going to confirm everything that I've been crying out for. Because you see, in that day, in our circles, we were told that you could only have one gift. So desiring all the gifts was like a contradiction to what we had been taught. And so I didn't want to violate any spiritual rule by crying out to God for all of the gifts. Well, the week ended and I did not receive a prophetic word. I got a little pat on the head and the prophet moved on. Well, I was like distraught because I wanted so much to know for sure that what I was hearing and seeing and the experience that I had, the visitation, was from the Lord. Well, at the end of the night, one of the teachers was asked to close the night in prayer. He began to pray. And as he began to pray, he began to walk towards me down the aisle. He, When he gets to the place where I'm sitting, 
he lays his hand on me and he begins to prophesy to me. And he prophesied everything that I had been crying out to the Lord about. So much so that the Spirit of the Lord said, Sharon, it is not a wrong thing to desire spiritual gifts. I want you to desire spiritual gifts. Sharon, it is not a wrong thing to want to operate in all the gifts. I say to you, you can operate in all the gifts. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, you know, as it happens with most of us, we get a prophetic word. For a little while, it's exciting. Maybe we transcribe it, we pray over it. A lot of people don't even do that. But it gets put on the shelf. Well, you know what? God does not forget those things. So school ended, Stephen and I packed up, went back to California because we felt like God said, I'm taking you back to California. Started attending a church, serving, you know, doing ministry there as the Holy Spirit allowed. And uh, I became pregnant. You know, we were just kind of going on doing life. Well, one day I was really longing from hear, to hear more from the Lord and to kind of go to that next place in my life with the Lord. And so I went into our bookstore that we had there and I was looking around for something and nothing really popped out at me. So I just kind of left the room. And on my way back to my seat, I get a tap on my shoulder. And it's someone that I don't know. And they say, Sharon, uh, the Lord wanted me to buy this book for you. And the Spirit wants you to know that this is a part of your destiny, that her story is also your story. The name of the book was Signs and Wonders by Maria Woodworth Etter. And do you know, I have received that book three times since 1984, three times. The first time was 26 years, and then the second time was 12 years. And each time, the Lord would say the same thing. Sharon, this is anointing that I've called you to walk in. Her story is also your story. Wow. Well, December of 2019, a couple of weeks before we moved here to Indiana, I was given that book for the third time. Same thing inscribed. Mom, God wants you to know this is a part of your story, your destiny. Well, each time I received the book, I glanced through the book. It was written in Old English. It was very hard to understand. Didn't really take the time to absorb it. Well, a few months ago, October of 2021, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, Sharon, get out the book, Signs and Wonders. Read it with intentionality because her story is a part of your story. What I'm saying, it has taken me 40 years to begin to grasp the, the magnitude of what God was speaking to me back in Bible school and the, and the divine encounter that I had with Jesus. I'm still grasping it because I have not walked in that, but I've endeavored to do so. Now this year, 2022, the Lord said to me, this is a year for my people to become authentically who I created them to be. And so I said, Lord, well, what, what is authentic? What does that mean when you say that? What are you, what are you meaning by that? So I, I looked up that word. And it, the first meaning is to be real, to not be fake. You know, the second meaning is to be uh, what's the word I'm looking for?
After the original. After the original. I'm going to find it because it's, I think it's important that we hear it. Oh, made to be or look like just like the original. Do you know in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, God tells us that his people were created in his image and in his likeness? So if we're going to be authentic in 2022, we need to be emanating God's likeness and his image in the earth realm in everything that we do, our life, our ministry, and our industry. Because the Lord said that's one of the things that he's going to begin to help each one of us this year for our life, our ministry, whatever that may be, and our industry to reflect his likeness and his image. Do you long for more? Do you long to be who God created you to be? Or well, I believe that this year it's possible. And I, But I believe it's, it's us making a decision to position ourselves, to hear what he's saying and make some changes. You know, I, I've been going through a corridor of change. God's been rearranging and repositioning me. And I believe that he's doing the same for many of you. Do you feel like you're in a corridor of change? Do you want more out of your life? Do you want to fully display the glory of God in everything that you do? I believe that you do, or you wouldn't be listening to my story. You know, every year I ask the Lord, um, I seek the Lord for myself first and foremost, then for my family, and then for the ministry. And I say, Lord, what is it that you want to do in Sharon? And normally I ask the Lord for a phrase. Give me a phrase that I can take that phrase and build everything else around it. Or this year, he actually gave me three phrases. The one I just shared, life, ministry, and industry. The second one, well, really the first one was life, ministry, industry. The second one was be authentically you. And the third one was enter into the good land, rest, inquire, and pursue. We're going to talk more about these three phrases later. But for now, I want you to know that maybe you're like me. I thought that I was walking out my destiny, my calling, that I was being authentically who God created me to be over these last 40 years of ministry. But the Spirit began to reveal to me otherwise. He said that I'm going to put you in a place a cocoon of transformation. That's what I've been in for the last two years since we moved from California to Indiana. A cocoon of transformation. I've been walking through this corridor of change. And if you've been in that same place, I believe that the Lord is doing with you what he's been doing with me. He's rearranging and restructuring you so that your true identity will shine in this season. For the most part, over the last two years, our, my ministry life has been rather slowed down. And I understood that when I moved, you know, when you move from one land to the Netherland, you have to establish yourself and you have to connect with people. And, you know, it takes time to do those things. But what I didn't realize is that the Lord would actually use that statement from Leonard I want to know that my life mattered and that I am fulfilling all that God has purposed for me, that I loved people. I want my, my life to matter. And so daily for the last year or so, that's been resonating in my spirit. It's been echoing in me. God has been working in me to bring about change for me because he said to me in October of this year as he began since then he's been really been speaking to me he said you've done a lot of wonderful things things that I called and destined you to do but you have yet to tap into the fullness of what I have created you for and that that book signs and wonders Maria Woodworth Edder's life 
Her story is a part of your story, and I want you to learn what that is. So I have positioned myself, and I encourage you to do the same, to begin to pursue the Lord for what it is that you're longing for. That you, It really isn't about what I'm longing for. It's about what God has put within you. That's really what I want you to get out of my story. Yes, I'm telling you the story of Sharon becoming, the making of Sharon and who God created her to be. But it's really about who God is making you to be. If you're not satisfied with your life and you know there's more that you that the Lord has for you, I want to encourage you, take the time to sit at the feet of Jesus. Ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me during this corridor of change. Walk with me. Rearrange things in my life. Bring that transformation that I need to freely and fully be authentically who I was created to be this year. If you would like, to know more as we unfold this Be Authentically You messages. Every week, we're going to upload encouraging messages, transformational teachings uh, to help you, help me become all that we were destined for. Because you know, this year is great themes are in store. It's going to be a year of chaos still. But the body of Christ can arise and shine like never before. And if you want to be a part of that glory company that God is raising up, position yourself to become authentically you in 2022. I encourage you, subscribe to our channels. Sign up to our mailing list so you can get updates uh, regularly about what we're doing. Uh, it will bless you. Our desire is to be a blessing to you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every single person that is listening to this video and that will listen to this video around the world. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would overshadow them, that you would begin to take them down that corridor of change as you are rearranging and repositioning them and restructuring them to display your likeness and your image to display your glory in the earth realm in this season of time. Holy Spirit, hover over the people. Transform them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Bless you. Thank you for subscribing. Till next week, this is Sharon.